Seek his holy presence. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord God, it's a special day as, as we honor our mothers and pay tribute. But Father, we, we, we take just a second to say, have your way. Speak to our hearts right now. Lord, help us to understand that maybe some had good mothers and others didn't know their mothers, but it's still our responsibility according to the word of God in the presence of God to honor her. Now, Father, as your man, sir, as I look at this text this morning, I decrease that you might increase. Speak now to your people, Lord God. Deliver a word that will be a seed planted in good soil for the furtherance of the kingdom. Have your way right now in this hour. And we surrender it all to you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, your electronic device there. I want to go to a New Testament passage of scripture found in the book of Hebrews in the 11th chapter going over to verse number 23 starting at verse number 23 Hebrews 11 starting at verse number 23 I, I, I want to take a New Testament look at an Old Testament I want to take a New Testament uh -huh. look at an yeah. Old Testament work. Hebrews chapter 11, going uh -huh. over to verse number 23. Uh -huh. A word from God for, for God's people. Amen. The word says, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, uh -huh. refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction yes. with the people of God than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, uh -huh. esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Uh -huh. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, <laughs> lest he would destroy, be destroyed, the firstborn should touch him. Uh, by faith they mm -hmm. passed through the Red Sea yeah. and by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. That's the word this morning. I want to take a New Testament look uh -huh. at an Old Testament word. Yeah. I want to talk about, for a few moments, a mother's love for, for her child. A mother's love for her child. In the text this morning, as, as we look at this text, I know we could celebrate Mother's Day and we could look at many mothers throughout the Bible. We could consider many in the Bible who were good mothers. We could start with Eve, the mother of all living. We could look at Hannah, the mother of Samuel, and even Mary, the mother of Jesus. But today, I, I, I want to consider, I want to consider just for a few moments, I want to consider Joshua. Uh -huh. The mother of Moses. Okay. In the text, her name is not given, but it, it didn't matter. I know her name. I know her name. Her name is Joshua. And right. She's the mother of Moses. Mother of she Moses. was a mother in difficult times. Here it is. All male babies were under decree to be killed or put to death. And yet she was able to raise her son. She acted in faith doing difficult times. Can I tell somebody this morning, a good mother lives by faith. Yes. Can I tell somebody this morning that we are living in difficult oh, times yes. and, and God is 
looking for a few good mothers this morning, some to walk in the footsteps of Joseph. I, I, I want you to understand this morning. There are only four things I want to point out to you in the text, and it's not going to take me long. I'm going to get out of the way of this celebration. I know some of you are getting the grills ready, but I just want a few minutes just to share a word with you this morning. Here it is in this text. Moses now is 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 born and he's the son of Joseph and and, and, and and she cares for her son. The decree has been given that now all male children would be put to death, but she decides some child is worth the living. She decides that he's worth the risk. He is in the text this morning. You, you know the story. She takes him and puts him in a basket and sends him down the Nile. And he ends up in the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's daughter would raise him for an extent and period of the time. And she would call upon Joseph to come in and be the nursemaid who would take care of the child. And it is strange how God can work some things out. That when you decide to let your child move forward, God will put you back in position to be your child's caretaker. I wish I had one or two witnesses yeah. that really knew the story this morning. Uh -huh. and, and, and Joseph had loves Moses. He is in the text. Of, the first point I want to get to you this morning, it says that she saw the potential in her child. All right now. Oh, God, that's the first point. She saw the potential in her child. In verse number 23, it says this in verse 23. It says that he was a beautiful child. He was a beautiful child. Not only was beauty in his looks, but she saw potential in what she saw. Can, can I help somebody this morning? Depending on how you look at the word in your translations, in, 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 in Exodus 2 and 2, it talks about him being a, a, a goodly child. And, and then over in Acts 7 and 20, it says this, that he was exceedingly fat. He, he was a child that was one to behold. She knew something was special about him. She saw the potential in her child. Rather than putting him to death, she took a chance in her life. Here it is. She sends him down the river in a basket now into the house of Pharaoh, taking a chance, not knowing how things would play out. But rather than have her son die, she would put her son in the hand of the enemy. But who would think that the enemy would bring her in to raise her own child? Yeah. It is. It is. She loved him. And she saw the potential in him. And, and, and she realized he was worth taking the risk for. Yeah, she was worth, he was worth taking the risk for. And can I say this to you? Children are to be a blessing right. and not a bomb. She, she realized that what she was going to do for him was going to help him be the person that God wanted him to be. Can I help somebody today? Often we try to live through our children. We force them into arenas, but yet we need to let them be who God wants them to be. All right. yeah. She saw the potential in her child. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And, and she loved him, yeah. but then most of all, she knew what was expected of him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because he was God's child first. He was a gift from God. She saw the potential for greatness that was already present in him as a baby. It is second thing this morning. She risked her life for her child. It's in the text. It's there in verse 23. It says they didn't fear the commandment of the king that the, the, the order and the decree had been put out that all male children should be put to death. But she took a risk for her child. She risked her life for her child. Can, can I say something today? Mothers will take a risk for their children. They'll put it all on the line. They'll go against the law. Some will even break the law if they think they can save their children. 
You don't have to help me preach it this morning because I had one of those kind of mothers. I had a mother that would go to battle for you. Even when you were wrong, they stand beside you. They take a risk. A mother that loves her child will take a risk for her child. Yeah. There may be a time when you have to go against the law. There may be a time when you will have to go against man's decree in order to help your child. In spite of the king's command, he is Joseph and he is her child. He is, she sent him down into Egypt, down on the Nile and into Pharaoh's household. But she took a risk to save the life of her child. Yeah. I wonder how many mothers here today, I wonder how many mothers are doing that you put yourself in the balance to save your child. See, you are too fine this morning. Maybe your child has just been perfect, but every now and then you come across one. Every now and then that affects your patience. Every now and then you'll have a situation and you'll have to shake your head. But being a good mother, you will get in a fight for your child. Mother's love for our child. In the text, here in the text now, we move over to that 24th verse and it says, By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Uh -huh. It is, it is, it, and this is the third point. She imparted faith to her child. Because the text says, by faith, when he became of age, he refused to become, be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. She had imparted a faith in him. She had put a word in him. She had exposed him to the heritage of his people. She had exposed him to the God of her faith. And when he got of age, he recognized who he was. It wasn't a matter that he was raised in Pharaoh's household. But what was on the inside of him rose up in him and it caused him to do something and he broke the law. You know the story. He killed an Egyptian, buried him in the sand, he had to flee for his life, but God still had his hand on hold. Yeah. Right. Yeah, she imparted faith to a child. Joseph then would teach him about the God that she served and she introduced him to the Lord. Can I share something with you this morning? It's important for a good mother. A mother loves her child. If you love your child, you ought to introduce your child to the Lord. You ought to put a word in them so when they get of age and they get out there in this dark world that we live, can I say it this morning? We live in some difficult times. Some folks are confused in the world. They don't know whether they're coming or going. And your child is going to have to come in contact with them. But there ought to be something on the inside of them. That she imparted faith to her child. Can you imagine? You are the caretaker of your own child, and it is your secret. But at the same time, you're proud, and you, you're a proud parent because you're raising your child That's right. in your faith tradition. All right. The decree was out that all male children should have been put to death, but you broke the law to save your child. And God rewarded you for breaking man's law. Because you did what was right in the eyesight of God. Joseph had did what was right in the eyesight of God. I stopped by and tell somebody this morning that every now and then you might have to do what's right in the eyesight of God over what's right in the eyesight of man. Y'all didn't get it this morning. The Lord said you not to put your hands on your children, but every now and then Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he 
Joe Smith raises a child and she teaches him yeah. about her people and her Lord. And when he gets of age, she decides now to, to he, he turns away from Pharaoh's household and he no longer will be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That's right. That's right. He owns up to his own people and he there's there's a calling in his life, there's a yearning inside of him to identify himself with the people that he's come from. That's right. Oh, you didn't get it this morning. She imparted faith right. to her child. Right. Yeah, her patient instruction. Yeah, built a faithful son. Yeah, I, I understand every now and then. I was one of those sons, God. I'm, I'm going to preach it anyhow this morning. Preach the hands. See, I was one of those sons that gave mama a headache, but I don't mind telling the world. I don't mind telling the world that my mama had patience, but her patience and instruction built up a faithful son. I, I stopped by telling another mother this morning, have some patience with your son. He might be going through some stuff right now. He might not be acting right right now, but have some patience with him because your patience and instruction will develop a faithful son. Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you, God. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, 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 I like that because Moses wasn't perfect. Yeah, he was a murderer. Yes, he was. If we tell the truth, he was a murderer on the run. Yes. But he still had faith in God. I'm going to get that this morning. He still had faith in God. His faith in God led him to a place where he could introduce himself to God for himself. Oh, God. Here we are this morning. Fourth and final thing there, verse number 25. Look at your text in, in there in verse number 25. It says this. Choosing rather to suffer affliction uh -huh. with the people of God than enjoying the passing pleasures of sin. Uh -huh. Moses made a choice yeah, right now. to suffer the afflictions of the people uh -huh. rather than the pleasures of sin. But I contend this morning that came out of the patient instruction that Joseph had did for him and with him in reference to her belief in God. That she spent a quality time with him and telling him about this God that she served. And, and it took hold. She planted a seed in some salt. And, and one day it, it, it brought forth the harvest. It brought forth the sun. That God could use. You know the story. You know the story that he is now. Moses fleeing for his life, and he ends up on the plains of Midian. Out there, he's, he's a shepherd over scorpions and snakes and crawling creatures. But here it is one day. He comes by a spot that he's always come by before. And, and there it is. He sees it for the first time a burning bush. The bush was on fire, but it wasn't consumed. And, and here it is, God was in the bush. God will make himself available to his children. And here it is, he tells Moses, take off your sandals. For the place you stand is holy ground. Every now and then, God will show up. You don't have to worry about it. If you take patience and give them some good instruction, and you introduce them to God, I was raised on what mama knew. You'll get it in a minute. I was raised on what my mama knew about worship and about God. And I heard the stories in Sunday school and in worship. I heard about a God that can save anybody. But after a while in my life, I got to a place where I ran into him for myself. Oh, God. Somebody ought to agree with me this morning. We all hadn't done everything right, but you had an encounter with the Lord that changed your life. My fourth and final point this morning, she enabled him to see the value of life. She enabled him to see the value 
of life. This is in the text because it says he made a decision. He made a decision in that life that he was living that he was going to walk away from the pleasures of sin. He would rather endure the afflictions of the people. He would rather go through the storm and the rain than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. She had taught him the values of life. Moses saw the temporary nature right. of sin. Yes. It was for a season. He chose to suffer with the people. And he understood that the suffering was for a temporary time. And he came to believe and, and he understood that his treasure was eternal. Y'all will get it this morning. See, to me, a lot of the children are focus on the things of the earth. But there's an eternal treasure that can't be purchased down here. And they need to know that there's something made up in heaven just for them. But you're going to have to give them some instructions. Yeah. yeah. A mother's love for a child. We need some mothers who love their children in difficult times. I contend this morning. If no mothers really love their children, we see less children dying in the streets. I contend this morning. If no mothers would share and imply that patient instruction, we can see as many children behind bars today. Yeah. I contend this morning. If mothers would show that love that they needed to show yeah. to some of their children, their children wouldn't be incarcerated in great numbers because they know how to make the right choices. They better choose to suffer for doing right than to end up with the pleasures of sin. And it's only a temple. The devil's was winning for the lack of instruction. A mother's love for a child. Joseph was a mother who was raising a child in difficult times. Yes, right. you, you, you got to look at the whole picture yes. because the times were difficult. The king's decree declared that male children should be put to death. She had to hide her child. She had to scheme out a way to keep her child alive so she could raise him in a time when children were being put to death. You ain't get it yet. Here it is. This was a mother's love. She went the distance and did some to make sure that her child would have a chance. That's a mother's love for a child. And I can tell you, there's some good mothers out there this morning. Some have gone the distance and did some. They spent their last dime. They cried tears at night. Went to sleep with tear stained clothes. Woke up with hairs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. A mother's love That's it. That's it. for a child. There's a reward mm -hmm. for a mother's faith. That's it. That's it. Moses was chosen uh -huh. by God mm -hmm. to lead the people of God. There's a reward for a mother's faith. I, I contend this morning, don't get beside yourself right. in your accomplishments. What you may have accomplished in your life. Because it just may be a mother's love right. and my faith that got you to the place where you are today. I wish I had some help. When you recognize you didn't do this thing by yourself, that there were some sacrifices made along the way. That there was a price to be paid along the way. But mother's faith has helped many of us get to the place where we are today. That's why she deserves to be honored. That's right. Yeah, her efforts to train him in faith. And then not only train him in faith, but help him to understand the importance of knowing how to live in difficult times. Yeah, we, we need yeah. to teach our children how to live in difficult times. It's difficult times when your child can't leave the house and you're not worried about if they're going to return. It's difficult times when your child can get out of your eyesight and you don't know what's going to happen to them before they can return at home. I contend all my often had some difficult times and 
seed in them. The word in them. So when they get out there among the wolves and in the faith, there'll be something on the inside that'll rise up in them. And, and when, when peace get brought, they'll realize that there's a better place. I contend this morning. They'll find their way back to the church. If you, if you give some wholesome instruction, if you give them some good instruction, and you tell them about this man named Jesus, in difficult times, they'll call on his name. Yes. In difficult times, they'll find their way back to the house of prayer. In difficult times, they'll fall on their knees and declare, Lord, shame me. In difficult times, He's faithful yes, he is. Yes, he is. and is just. Oh, yes. There's a reward for a mother's faith. Moses was chosen by God to deliver and lead the people of God. But here, here we are. When Moses accepted the assignment, uh -huh. he knew that risk was involved. I'm trying to help somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here it is. His mother told him and told him to trust, to trust in the Lord. In the Lord. Trust God. Adverse circumstances. You know the story. God says, Moses, go down in the Egypt land. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Difficult right. times. Because Moses in his mind had to think about God, you sure about this? Because my face is on the roller coaster down in Egypt. My, my name has a bounty on it down in Egypt. I, I'm not the best speaker, but he says, you just go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You got to trust in the Lord. And, and if you put it in your child, your child will have something to draw times get home. Yeah. I'm done this morning. A mother's love uh -huh. for our child. Yes, sir. It, yeah, in the context of the text, she saw the potential of her child. Yes. Then she risked her life for her child. Yeah. Uh -huh. But more than that, she, she imparted faith to her child. Uh -huh. And then finally, she enabled him to see the value of life. Right. What a mother's love. Mm. I contend this morning, Joshebed loved Moses. Right. And her love for Moses took her to a place where she just had to trust God. All right. I wonder how many of you right now are trusting God for your children. You've got it all. And I, I don't mean to bother you this morning. You've done all you can do. You've done everything you can put your hands to. Because you're a loving mother and you love your child, you're trusting God right now to do the work in your child's life that maybe you couldn't do. Maybe there's something that you feel like is incomplete. But I stop by to tell somebody this morning. Trust God, mothers. If you love your child, trust God with your child. Amen. Oh, I gotta tell it. I gotta tell it because I have that experience. All right now. I wasn't perfect. I told you by a long shot. When I tested my mother's nerve and I pushed her to the end of yeah. the nerves, at some point she got to the place and she yeah. said, "I'm done with it. I'm gonna put you in the Lord's hand." I stopped on the table.
in the Lord's hand. My Lord. But she made sure that he had some God in him. That's yes, right. sir. That's right. She made sure that he knew who the Lord was. That's mm -hmm. right. I, I, I think Joseph had saw the future <laughs> in difficult times. That. That. that there was going to come a day when he would have to call on the Lord on the for Lord. himself. Yes. I think Joseph had saw the future. Yes. That there would come a time when folk would come against him. Yes. I think she saw the future. Yes. That there would come a time when trouble would come his way. I saw by the time
the storm and the rain.